Hi there, I'm Karen Roby talking with Stephanie Condon today about nuanced communications and the software interfaces that drivers use to communicate with cars and what that experience will be like for all of us in the coming years. So uh, Stephanie, thanks for being with us. Just to start off, what is uh, Nuance's role in the automotive world? Hey Karen, well Nuance provides user interface software and it's almost in half the vehicles around the world. They work with almost every major brand. So chances are that if you have a new or newer car, their software is in your center console. Uh, right now, what's standard in most vehicles is the ability to perform uh, phone related functions like calling people with your voice, say, call Karen, or music related functions like playing a playlist or navigation functions like setting a destination. It, you know, Stephanie, when we talk about our cars and the future and some things we used to think like flying cars and things that we would see eventually, we all kind of have some features, I think, or ideas in our heads. So talk about what some of the realistic upcoming features are and how uh, the driving experience will change over the next couple of years. Well, Nuance isn't working on driving cars just yet, but in the next year, um, just in this year alone, we'll see some pretty uh, fun features that will make driving much more convenient. Right now, um, they will soon be rolling out uh, the concept of a button-free car, so really advancing their uh, voice communications technology so you can control functions with really pre precise detail. So you'll be able to say open the window, but also uh, open the window halfway or open the window a little bit more. So you'll be able to control uh, these features without pushing any buttons, but also without a wake up word. So it's a little bit different than the smart speaker you have at home or your virtual assistant on your phone where you might have to say, Alexa, do this or hey Google, do this. Uh, in the future, you'll just be able to interact with the car without buttons or without saying wake up word. The car will just be listening. All right, I like the idea of that. Uh, one thing though that we don't like the idea though, of course, is uh, you know with advances always comes a concern about privacy. Is this something that we do need to be concerned about? Yeah, it is. So the car is always listening to you, but Nuance says that effectively that what you say in the car stays in the car. So unless you're asking for external information like a nearby place to eat, um, that information should stay within the vehicle. Um, the way it works specifically is Nuance uses what's called a one-way hash mechanism. So all the data that comes out of the car is separated in two different buckets and coded in a way that doesn't make it possible to recombine the data to um, reconstruct it so we know who's driving the vehicle. So if you're driving from, say, Pittsburgh to Pennsylvania, there might be data showing that a car is making that trip but theoretically, Nuance says we wouldn't be able to figure out that it's your vehicle. Um, you know, at the same time, there are features coming down the line where you'll be able to uh, pull information from external sources. So, um, you know, I told you about the kind of buttonless car experience, but a, a further down the line, um, but actually sometime this year, Nuance says we'll be able to um, pull out interact with the outside world effectively using your voice, but also your eyes. So um, let's say you're driving and you see a restaurant you wanna stop at. Um, uh, you could be driving and looking out the window at the restaurant and the car will be able to determine um, where you're looking, the direction you're looking and using that information as well as your geographic location, it effectively would be able to determine what restaurant you're looking at. So if you say, what's the ratings for that restaurant? the car would be able to pull up that information just based on where you're looking. Um, so if you use that kind of uh, communications with the car, they would have to send data about your location, obviously, to the cloud to you know sync up with that restaurant uh, with their information. But Nuance says that the uh, automotive makers really have very little incentive to share that data, to sell it, um, you know, to do the sort of information uh, data exchange that we've heard about social media companies doing. They say that uh, automotive makers care deeply about their uh, brand and their reputation and don't want customers to have any uh, concerns about that. So they're doing their best to keep that information private when possible, they say. 
All right. Well, that's good uh, uh, considering how, how many of so many of us are, are very concerned about that uh, and with the privacy and, and data. So, uh, you know, a lot of these features, Stephanie, in the car, they're they're designed so that we can keep our eyes on the road and don't worry about putting the window down and changing the station and things like that. So, uh, but how safe is it, though, uh, do they say, in terms of interacting with the platforms while you are driving? You know, as they get more sophisticated, these voice-based interactions are taking in a lot of information. Um, so it's, let me give you an example. Let's say we're driving down the road and you want to listen to music. So you see your car, uh, listen to the Nora Jones station. station. But um, say you have a child in the back of your car and he takes off his seatbelt. So the system might get an alert from, its, from the car's internal network. Uh, that this is happening, or it might also get an alert from a sensor outside the car that there's another car in your blind spot. Uh, so, you know, as these communications systems become more sophisticated, they have to make that calculation, like, is it still safe to, you know, interact with a user um, and give them information about their playlist and the music they want to listen to? Um, so these are calculations that are being factored into the software design. Nuance says it has research that shows that interacting with a driver at a critical moment can increase the risk of an accident. So um, it's definitely a real factor, obviously something you don't have to worry about when you're talking to your smart speaker at home. Right, absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and Stephanie, in terms of the industry as a whole, what are Nuance and, and the other companies out there, what are they doing though to ensure that we're safe while using these systems in general? So, um, you know, like I said, they're building into the software that, you know, kind of decision making system. Also, they're um, coming up with technologies that take a more proactive approach of trying to create, um, you know, safe interact interactions. There's a company called Affectiva uh, in Boston that is de um, developing emotion detection technology, which, you know, sounds a little bit creepy, I think, but it basically just means they're taking a range of factors like biometrics, like your heart rate, um, facial uh, features, like whether you're frowning, to uh, assess your emotions and determine, you know, whether there's um, any risk involved in your driving. So um, if there's any indication you're tired, for instance, um, and the car knows that you've been on the road for a long time, um, Software companies like Nuance are working with this emotion detection technology to um, engage with the driver and offer proactive solutions. So one way you might do that would be to um, engage in conversation to keep them alert or to uh, suggest a nearby hotel to stop at if they're far from their destination. Um, so there are ways that you know emotion detection can be used to uh, improve driver safety um, also it's worth mentioning emotion detection you know isn't just for safety it'll come in to play in less critical ways like uh, determining the style of dialogue between the system and the user so for instance if the car thinks you're angry um, you may not want to hear a really chipper voice saying like hi karen how are you you know it would use um a style of dialogue that would be more suitable for the mood. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how, how to feel about that, Stephanie. It does seem uh, awfully strange to think about, uh, you know, the evaluating our uh, facial expressions and, and trying to determine our, our feelings at that point. You know, I guess if you look a little sleepy, maybe it will suggest that we uh, stop for a cup of coffee or something like that. Uh, well, for more, uh, Stephanie, of course, on your article on this with nuance and your discussion, that can be found at ZDNet. And we certainly appreciate uh, your insight on this, Stephanie.